good morning good evening uh, fellow data architects data engineers um, welcome to this uh, series of sessions related to design document for data platforms um sometime back i had written up uh, an article on on medium for uh, writing design document when uh, creating a data platform um mainly in the data and analytics uh, related ecosystems and uh, i did get a lot of you know good feedback for that and i thought i'll just convert it into a a, a video stream as well um so yeah here we are uh, will uh, what i'll do is i'll maybe convert this into um several smaller bites of video so that it is easy for for you to uh, go through it um in today's uh, lecture maybe we'll go through the very first section of this i'll try to give you some background and what uh, what this uh, article has i'll also give the uh, link of the article uh, in the in the description so um so uh, what is a design document right uh, I, I think most of you might have created one or might have seen um or consumed a design document created by other architects at some point of time um this uh, this this lecture is mainly about design document related to only to the data ecosystem okay we are not going to talk about an enterprise level design document or a very high level solution architecture right uh, which is also an important document uh, when you start any any uh, bigger engagement but this is specific to a uh, data ecosystem and what i'll do is i'll, I'll talk about all the you know uh, practical things uh, which you'll come across while working on a design design document uh, there won't be much of a theory it is all based on my experiences um, what what really is required what are the important things that you should add to a design document um, uh, it also depends right how much detail info you want to give like sometimes uh, there would be a low level design document also that the architects might create uh, after you know after and creating a high level design document this this design document i think i think it is a mix of a high and a low level one um, if if required you can still create low level design document based on each and every component or the you know different uh, um, components of a data platform like for data ingestion and data transformation uh, but uh, this this document should suffice as a as a starting point for anyone who wants to you know start building the system uh, so um, as I said, right, uh, this this document is mainly uh, who is the audience, right? It is mainly for the data architects uh, who are writing a design document. Some of you might be doing it for the first time, so I'm sure it will help you. But for others who have already done this, uh, maybe you can go through it and see if you know um, anything else is missing, and you can also comment and add few more sections here if if you think that can that can help others as well. Uh, this is all based on my experiences, right? Uh, there's no right or wrong way of uh, doing this. Um, you can do this in multiple ways. There can be, a, uh, I've seen people creating, uh, you know, more than 100 plus pages of design document. I've seen um, just a high level design documents, which is just a two or three pager, right? So it, it all depends on what really uh, you want from this document or more than that, I would say what really your, um, you know, the consumers of these documents are looking from this. Um, uh, audience it is for the data architects tech lead solution designers uh, even the tech project managers right who want to plan their engagement uh, the the uh, overall project planning they can also refer this and then based on that they can create so it's it's uh see it's a very very generic design document i would say um or you can think of it as a template or a master template that you can refer to and then create your design document um, no two design documents are going to be same okay it's not that you can just use this and copy paste it that's not going to happen uh, in all all these years that i have worked right uh, each and every project that i've seen is different uh, every project needs a different kind of a design document because the design considerations are different um, the aims and objectives of the projects are different so please use this only as a reference or as a template um, but yeah do customize it as based on your requirements uh, so uh, I've divided this into uh, 10 high level sections. Okay. Uh, what does a design document should have? Um, I, I think these uh, these 10 sections are the important ones at a very high level. You can again uh, subcategorize this or further divide this into further sections. But at a high level, uh, please have this, these 10 sections at least. Um, first one is the background and overview where we'll talk about what is the you know our overall uh, project scope and the overall engagement scope then we'll talk about the requirements um 
and the functional requirements mainly there is another section for i think uh, nfrs also these are the non functional requirements so both we'll cover the functional requirements the non functional requirements uh then we'll move to design consideration which is you know uh, i think design consideration design principle these two are the most important sections of any design document uh i would say this is the heart of the design document so we need to pay uh, special attention to this uh then comes the tech solutioning right where we'll have the high level architecture and you know the the building blocks and the uh, components of a data platform um post that uh, we talk about security and governance which is very very important especially if you are trying to build something in cloud right if you if you are building a cloud data ecosystem then security and governance uh, both of these are a day day zero uh, you know service as um, as they say now right uh, it's not an off the thought you cannot really think about security and governance uh, later so yes we have to cover that as well and then as an architect right it's always good if you can give some more guidelines right related to testing and all uh, Uh, there can be a debate right why testing should be part of the design document uh, but what i would say is right it's more about having a testing guidelines so that the testing teams can uh, you know work on these again testing in data is very very different so it's important that you as an architect can uh, you know guide the team how to do that and then finally the the sections related to references and appendix right where from where you have uh, referred various uh, documents and all the list of that appendix as in the glossary and some of the other things so at a high level these are the you know 10 sections that you know will will cover in this uh, design design document um more more or less this should cover everything but as i said right you can add a few more sections based on what you really are looking for or you can add some more sections as well uh, if you want to uh, you know uh, give that details or if you want to remove certain sections right like uh, uh maybe the nfrs right you want to keep it as a separate document altogether or a testing uh guidelines right it can be a separate document even that is fine but uh, what i'm trying to say here is that all these sections are important at least even if these are separate document that's fine but uh, if you're starting a new uh project and you want to capture all these right uh please ensure that uh, there are documents for these so that the um the development team the implementation team the testing team uh the the teams who are going to do uh some dry runs doing going to do some performance test and all uh, they can go and refer to this document